By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to look at a match played at a brand new tournament in the Netherlands. We're going to look at action from the Farmstead. And the Farmstead is a brand new tournament held here in the Netherlands in Mierlo, the south of the Netherlands, where actually you have a lot of farms, hence the name Farmstead. The cool thing about this tournament is that it is corset only. And with the corsets, they've also included revised. So that means that you get to use ATOC, you know, uh, you get to use Hercules Recall, you get to use Surrender Perfreet. It's really interesting, like it opens up a whole new door to like the core set brewing. So that's really something that I'm looking forward to when I'm going to look at the deck pictures. And in this particular match, we're going to look at a match played in the first round of the Swiss uh, of the tournament. And we're going to see Filco, who's playing with a red and a green deck. And he's going to take on Edo, who's playing with a, uh, a black blue and a little bit of red in there, a Plague Reds deck. So it's going to be really, really interesting. And before I dive into this, I would just for, uh, first like to mention that there was also a brew price and um, the brew price is, is a beta sorts to plowshares. And as you can imagine, a lot of people wanted to win that. And how could you win that? Well, there was actually a whole list of brew points that you can win when you were brewing your deck. And these brew points were connected to the to the whole farm theme. For example, Farmstead, of course, is a three-point brew card, but also a card like uh, like Nightmare because it's a horse and you can find horses on a farm. So that's also a point. So they have they have this really kind of elaborate system where you can even get a brew point for playing with Black Lotus because it's a flower and you can find flowers in a farm area, right? So it's it's really funny if you're interested in like seeing that list. I'll add it to the description below. Talking about the description below, if you want to go straight to the games, I know some of you want to do that. Uh, in the description below, you can find several timestamps. One of those reads MTG Games. Click on there, that will take you straight to the action. And also you can kind of use it to go through this video like you would go through a music CD, right? You can just choose what track you want to play. If you want to go to the deck text first, go ahead, you know, choose the chapter deck text. If you want to go to the action first, the games first, choose that chapter whatever you like. It's also really easy to, for example, skip this introduction if you don't like these long introductions with my videos. No worries, no harm, no foul. So before I start uh, with the actual deck tech section, I would first just like to ask you to subscribe if you're new here on the channel. Absolutely welcome and ring that bell. All that helps. And of course, liking the video. So now we are going to go uh, dive into the decks and I'm actually going to start with the deck of Filco. Let's take a look. And here we see the deck of Filco. Now in the introduction I called a red and a green deck, but actually there's also some white in here. And of course the healing solve is the first thing that catches my eye. How cool is it to see this card in action? I'm really looking forward and I'm hoping, I'm praying that we get to see this in an actual match. You know, healing solve is one of those cards where I think, you know, yes, it's bad, but is it really that bad? I mean, it still gives you options, right? You can or heal, you can prevent three damage, or you can gain three life. I mean, it kind of, it's an option. And whenever a card gives you an option just for one mana at instant speed, can it really be that bad? You know, how many games haven't you played where it was one point of damage that made all the difference or one creature dying that made all the difference? With Healing Solve, you know, in theory, you could save that key creature. And in theory, you could just give yourself some extra life. For example, this deck has Channel Fireball in it. So, you know, what if you just need those extra points of life ahead of your opponent and you could do that with that healing solve? That would be, that would be fantastic. You know, Philco, if you can pull that off in this match, I definitely tip my hat to you, sir, if, if, if you manage to pull that off. Like playing a healing solve to get the crucial amount of lives needed to then in your turn cast a Channel Fireball. That would just be fantastic. But your deck has more weapons than just direct damage and healing solve. Um, you're also playing with kind of, I guess, the aggro package with some old school, old school stuff, you know, and with that, I mean, the cards that people used to play, like Curd Ape, used to be super popular. You don't see it that much anymore because of Mistress Factory. But guess what? We're playing core set only. So it's alpha, beta, unlimited, and revised. And then there is no Mistress Factory. So that means that a creature like Curd Ape actually gets a chance to shine again. So Curdip is just a 1-1, one -one, right? Originally from Arabian Nights, but reprinted in Revised and thus playable at this tournament under the rulings. And when you have a forest in play, the Curdip becomes a 2-3. It feels at home in the forest. 
So if you cast this with Taiga, you've got a 2-3 creature turn 1, which is pretty good. And we also see, of course, some, some green ramp that you would expect. We see a full play set of Llanowar Elves, and they can help Filco here to kind of maybe cast Land Destruction early. For example, the Stone Rain or the Ice Storm. Again, an interesting choice to only play one of each instead of a little bit more. Now, of course, land removal is not as crucial in this format. Why? You don't have Maze of If, you don't have Library of Alexandria, um, you know, there's there's also no strip mine, by the way. So that's that's the land removal spell that's gone. That's usually in almost any deck. Um, and then, of course, earlier I mentioned it already. The Mishra's Factory is not in here, so there's not as much need for land destruction. On the other hand, because your opponent will not have access to like a City of Brass, perhaps the dual lands are really nice target to destroy with your land removal. And of course, land destruction, it gives you that tempo play, right? Which I think is really good in these kind of more aggro builds. If you can just get ahead a couple of turns, a couple of land drops, it can really make a huge difference when you can put pressure on really early. Um, I really like, by the way, to see a Thicket Basilisk and two Cockatrice in this deck. You don't, you don't see those cards that often anymore, so it's really great to see them getting some play. And also, look at that lure. There's a lure in the deck. So we could see a Thicket Lure combo. Now that is old school for you. So Philco, man, thank you for bringing this deck to the table. Now let's take a look at the deck of your opponent. Let's go to the deck of Edo. And here we see the deck of Edo. And as you can see, it's really a Plague Red deck. Now Plague Red's a card for one black and two. And it's got power and toughness, asterisk, asterisk. Because it uh, depends on the amount of reds you've got in play. If you've got one Plague Red, it's a 1-1. One, one. If you've got 20 Plague Reds, because Edo is playing with 20 of these... They're all 2020s. The cool thing is Plague Reds, uh, it's an exception to the, you can only play with four of one card rule. You can play with as many Plague Reds as you want. And we can see that Edo has taken full advantage of that, going with 20 Plague Reds. And when we look at the rest of the deck, you know, we, we see power, we see some jewelry, we see some ways for him to draw more cards. We see Bat Moons, and those Bat Moons are going to make the Reds even stronger. And we also see a card that I feel is still a little bit underestimated, maybe a little bit underappreciated, I don't know, and that is Pestilence. Now, once you have Pestilence on a battlefield, you're ahead and your opponent cannot kill all your creatures. It is such a nasty card to play against. So Pestilence, two black and two to cast for an enchantment, and you can pay one black to deal one damage to each opponent, I would should say each player, because you also damage yourself, and each creature on the board. And at the end of the turn, if there are no creatures then Pestilence gets destroyed, right? So that's an important clause. But obviously, there are just a lot of fun things that you can do with Pestilence. You can play it with Regeneration Creatures, for example, or you can play it with uh, with Breeding Pit that you get a Thrall Token at the end of the turn. They're just, you know, you can play it with Amishra's Factory. There it is again. Um, so there are just so many fun things that you can do with Pestilence. And I, I just still feel, and let me know in the comments below how you feel, that Pestilence is still underused i do understand it's, it's four black to cast yeah i'm sorry uh, two black and two to cast so four mana so it's not the quickest thing to get on the board but still it's just so powerful and i mean it's just a common i mean i feel it should be rare that's just my humble opinion anyway uh this is the deck of ada we've looked at the deck of philco let me know in the comments below who do you think is going to win this one i i think the problem here for for ada is all that direct damage but then again, I don't think that Philco is playing with Earthquake. So at least that's something. So if Edo can get out of the gate swinging, he's got a good chance. But I kind of feel that Philco's got the upper hand here. But I might be wrong. I might be wrong. So these are the cards of Edo. We've looked at the deck of Philco. Now let's go to the game. Game number one is about to start here. We have Edo on the right with the Plague Rats deck. Looks like he's taking a mulligan. And we've got Philco on the left, and he's playing mainly red-green aggro, but there is some white in there as well, including a healing solve. So let's keep our eyes open and see if we get to see that one. And we see a Mox Ruby, a Basic Swan by Edo, a Taiga here by Philco, and a Pass. So not a Curd Ape here. And there's the first Plague Rats, and we seem to be plagued by some, uh, some glare as well. There's a quick Lightning Bolt by Philco here, taking care of the first Plague Rats, but I'm sure there are many more to come. A second Taiga and a Pass, another Plague Rats, I do think I see another bolt in hand there. Is he going to bolt that one as well? It looks like he's just going to pass now. And there's another Plague Rats. So that means that one is now a 2-2. Two -two. He's going to take the damage. Going to go down to 18. Interesting here. We don't see him use his Lightning Bolt. That is quite interesting. There's another Plague Rats. Going to attack with both. I'm kind of expecting him to use that bolt now. No, he's taking the damage. Or is he... 
It looks like he is. Then he's going to go down to 14. No, he's going to go down to 12 even. There are now three threes, of course. Wow. And there's a double bolt, and I think that's a very wise decision. You don't want to drop down that far. And there is a dragon whelp. There's an underground sea. And is there going to be... Oh, Wheel of Fortune. I thought it was going to be another plague rats. It's a Wheel of Fortune by Edo. Very important because he was really running out of steam. And now he's probably going to find more plague rats to play out. He's still on 20. Going to tap 2. Going to play Demonic Tutor. I wonder what he's going to look up. Perhaps a time twister for like after he's emptied his hand again. Or maybe something to deal with the Dragon Whelp. Dragon Whelp, of course, being a bit of a problem here. Time Walk is another option. He's, gonna, he's going through his deck. It looks like he's also uh, a little bit in the tank. There's not really one card that stands out. And of course, he's looking at his hand that has a big influence on what he's going to pick. Couldn't see it, so uh, we'll just have to wait and see what Edo chose. And if he's going to pass turn now, it just means that Philco can swing in with that Dragon Ball, potentially deal 5 damage, and cut a quarter of his life total. And there's the pass turn. Untap here. Draw for turn. Full hand. We see a Curd Ape. We see Burn. Probably a land in there. He's first going to attack. And is he going to pump it fully? No, he's not going to attack first. First going to play a Mountain, and then he's going to attack. Deal 5 damage, second main play a Curd Ape, which is now a 2-3 because of the Taigas in the forest, and pass turn. So that Curd Ape is actually a pretty good blocker for that one single play Kratz on the table. It's looking mighty lonely, and he is attacking, and it's dying, so there is a balance, exactly. Classic move here. Whenever your opponent does a suicide attack like that, you've got to go, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. And there is another Plague Rats. Again, a lot of glare on it, but we know it's a Plague Rat. Just a 1-1, though. And there's a Thicket Basilisk, it looks like, in the hand of Philco, choosing to play out his Curd Ape first, a 2-3. So that's a great blocker again for the Plague. What else is he going to do? Does he want to commit to the board? He now knows that the balance is gone, so why not? And he's just passing turns, so keeping his options open here. Interesting. Probably see some more rats. So there's another one. And there is a bad moon. That means that Plague Rat is now a 3-3. There is an attack. Giant Grove and a block. So Plague Rats is gone. And just a 2-2 Plague left for Edo. And there we see a Disenchant on the bad moon. So what he could have done as well is instead of using the Giant Grove, play a Disenchant on the bad moon and then block the Plague Rats. Attack here by the Curdip. Edo dropping to 13, and there is a Disintegrate, and he's on 8. Things are looking bad for Edo. He's playing against a deck with tons of burn. Another Plague Rats. And there's a Pestilence. Pestilence not as good right now because Edo is so far behind on life, and he's playing against a burn deck. Let's see, can Philco already finish it? Um, counting his lands, he's got seven lands, so a burn spell is not going to make it for him. It's going to bring him close, though, but not close enough. It looks like he's also counting the lands here, tapping a red. Are we going to see another Curd Ape? Are we going to see a Bolt? Tap, tap, tap. Is he going to play a Fireball maybe on both of the Plague Rats? That's, of course, an option. That's exactly what he does. Edo stepped out, so Philco doesn't have to worry about any counter magic. So he's destroying, burning both the Plague Rats and then an attack. And that means that Edo's going to drop to 6 here. And I think this is a good decision by Philco to double Fireball. And there is a Jam Day Tome. Is he now going to use the Pestilence to kill the Curtip? If he does, he's in Fireball range. Uh, sorry, Lightning Bolt range. Because that would put him on 3. So he's not. he is doing it. That is so risky, but he has no choice. And are we now going to see a Bolt? Don't think there's a bolt in hand for Foco. And he's playing a Giant Grove. And that means it's game. It's game. That is it. Because of the Giant Grove, the Curdy becomes a 5-6. Doesn't die to the Pestilence. And then deals the remaining 3 points of damage needed to kill Edo here. So that's a game one.
win here for Philco. Now, both of these players are going to go into their sideboards and we'll catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two is about to start here with Edo, of course, on the play after losing the game one. And it seems that Philco just has too much removal in his deck, too much burn. But let's hope for Edo that he gets lucky and he can make it into a 1-1. One -one. But it's going to be really tough. There's a Plateau and a Mox Ruby. So a quick start, not a green source, unfortunately, for Philco. Unable to play that Lana Elves. There we see the Lana Elves finding that forest from the top. Also has that Dragon Whelp that he can play next turn. And there is a pass. And Edo, does he have... Ooh, it seems he doesn't have any lands. He just has to pass. That's bad news. And I'm not quite sure what dual lands they are. They look like Tundra dual lands to me on the side of Edo. It's kind of hard to see with the glare. But if there are Tundras, it's bad news. He's playing with a lot of black in his deck. He needs a black source. Let's first see what Philco can do with his turn. Looks like he draw into a Curd Ape. And there is a Mountain Curd Ape cast. And there's also that Dragon Whelp that we saw earlier. So he can put some, uh, some uh, pressure on next turn. Okay, a Lightning Bolt here for Edo. Finding that Badlands from the top. So that's good news for him. At least it's going to save him a little bit of damage. He's still on 20. If he just draws into the right lands and uh, can put some some cards out, he might be able to bounce back from this. There's a Cockatrice by Fulco. There is the first Plague Rats from Edo. And Fulco here drawing into another Lanawar Elves. So he could actually play both Lanawars. Not quite sure what the other cards in hand are. Could be a lure behind that one Lanawar. Not quite sure. And for Philco, it's quite easy right now, right? You just have to attack with the Curd Ape and the Cockatrice. Okay, there's the Bolt on the Ret. That means an extra point of damage with the Lanawar. Dealing 5 points, Edo dropping down to 13. And probably going to play at that other Lanawar. And pass turn. There we see a Swamp. So at least, I guess, mana is not really an issue anymore. Okay, that's actually not too bad. We see the Psionic Blast taking care of the Cockatrice. Of course, the problem here for Edo, because it looks like he's he's building a lot of creature removal, which is pretty good, but the Psionic Blast also deals damage to you, and that's kind of a downside. He's now on 7, and there's a Plague Rats. Yeah, it's, it's just looking pretty bad for Edo. This whole second game wasn't really into it, got behind because he missed uh, that land drop on turn 3. And couldn't really make up for it. I mean, he's on seven. There's full pressure. Man, he's going to drop to two here. He needs a balance, I guess. There's a bolt. If he can outplay a Plague Rats, at least he can stay on one. Okay, there's a Drain Life. No, he's going to play Plague Rats instead. I think that's a good move in this case. I mean, there's, there's hardly any way out of here. I mean... There's so much burn as well in the deck. Oh, there's a lure. What a cool way of finishing. Oh, he's not even attacking. He's not attacking. Why not play the lure? Attack with all your creatures. He has to block the lure and then you win. Why didn't Philco attack? Wow, and that means that actually Edo is still in here. And probably Philco is just going to burn him out now. Edo on three. Wow, this is something I, I didn't expect uh, to happen. I really thought that Philco would attack, putting the lure on the Lanawar. That would, would have been a really cool ending of the, of the match. Instead, Edo is still alive, playing more Plague Rats than ever. Four Plague Rats in play, meaning they're all 4-4s four now. And he's attacking, why not? And there we see uh, his life total. Okay, there's Disintegrate. This is probably it. I'm now hoping that Edo has a Counterspell of some sort to kind of stop this Disintegrate. That would be really good. Looks like Philco is still in the tank. I would just play Disintegrate, I guess. That's what he does. Playing a Disintegrate and... Oh, playing a Swords to Plowshares. That means that he gets 4 life, go to 7, takes 6 damage. And then he attacks with everything he has. Okay, that's enough. That's enough. Oh, man. Edo almost got back from that. Wow, but you kind of know against these decks and um, I, I, I can tell you this from experience and you've probably played against red decks or decks with a lot of red burn in them like Philco's deck that you kind of know when you're at a certain point when you're low enough 
and you know he's done enough damage with just regular creature combat damage you know it's going to be almost impossible to win the game there's always an out and you always always should play according to you know towards your outs there's always a chance but the chance is very slim anyway this was the first game from the farmstead tournament and i'll be showing you some more games just some some random games that i recorded when i was there and uh, i've got a lot of more fun games for you from this tournament coming up so if you enjoy the core set kind of magic that is being played on the farmstead uh, make sure to check back on the channel next week tuesday because then we have another update from the farmstead and of course we also have a regular friday episode with another old school magic match so in other words keep an eye on timmy talks because there's a lot of cool content coming your way and uh, talking about keeping an eye on the channel if you want to support the channel uh, please subscribe if you're new here welcome and what you can also do is ring that bell and if you ring that bell um, then you get notifications you'll be the first one to know whenever i put anything on the channel another thing that you can do is like this video that really helps share it on your social share it with your friends if you want to of course and uh, also comment all that helps and is completely free and you're really helping timmy talks grow by doing those simple steps another thing that you can do is you can become a patron of timmy talks by joining the patreon program and that means that you're supporting the channel financially as well and it already starts with one dollar the cool thing is uh, we've got our own discord i organize events to kind of thank my channel members and patrons so if you join the patreon program you can also join those tournaments um and last but not least your name will be in the end scroll at the end of every video including this one talking about the end scroll let's go and take a look at the fantastic the wunderbar the amazing channel members and patrons of timmy talks let's have a look what shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor?